Um, sure. I, I'll make a motion that we appoint um, Jessica Welch to fill our open slot. I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there is here, so you can get sworn in if you are prepared to say aye. Sure. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Right there. Okay. Um, sworn in by Kate and Cheryl. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Yeah, but actually, you know what? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Well, we have a picture. I'll get you out. Oh, okay. I think it's just came from a cleaning job. Don't get me. We don't need a picture. Yeah, we don't. Why? Why the flag and raise your right hand? And it's it's kind of simple for that last Okay. So, um, I, I just before you picture, I'll say I. 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 Jessica Welch. I can solemnly sincerely and swear and affirm that I will be a faith and true alliance to the United States of America and the state of New Hampshire and will support the Constitution of the because we had a power. I. Mm -hmm. I Hopefully, hopefully this will make it one more meeting. Somebody riding with me or not. So I'm, I'm just looking for maybe a, a waiver from 
the need to have one of them ride with me when I go there, or I'm more than willing to uh, purchase a, a dump sticker to go up there, uh, kind of corner off to show I'm not a resident or whatever. But I would like to continue doing this. I've done this forever for them. And uh, I used to own a garage, you know that. And I sold the garage, so there's, there's, there's nothing coming out of the garage. There never was anyway. It was just a hangout for me. So I'm, I'm just looking for uh, to be able to go up and continue what I've been doing for how many years, I don't know. Well, the, one of the problems that we're, we're having is that there's, a, there's people who are not properly um, don't have dump stickers and they're dumping, so they're trying to, to stop that. Certainly. And the problem, it, it, does your wife or your daughter have the ability to drive? Yes? I'm sorry? Your wife or your daughter have the ability to drive. Sure. So they could get a transfer station sticker and you could take their vehicle and it wouldn't be a problem. Right? The, yeah. The, the change is that people like to go in there without a sticker, you don't know who those people are that are coming in there and doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody knows who I am. I spent 40 years here on the fire department, more than 40 years at the garage or whatever. And then I'm just trying to help out. I know you paid for doing this, so it's not like getting paid and, and bringing it to the day. So uh, I'm, I'm just looking for some relief so that I can continue to do what I want uh, as per this letter, with that exception. Well, we have to follow the rules because we're requiring everyone else to do the same thing. Yeah. We just had one um, with someone who wasn't didn't have the ability to drive. Yeah. So um, we issued a, um, a permit to the daughter, but because they didn't have the ability to drive. If, if your if your wife or your daughter will allow you to take their vehicle with a transfer station sticker on it, then you can take their. Okay. That's, my my that's daughter the only doesn't have her car up here because they have business in Tennessee. So I have all that stuff in Tennessee. I spend more time at their house than I do at my house taking care of things up there. So it's, uh, th th there's a little difference, I think, from someone just coming from someplace else and, and doing that. I, I think an exception uh, could be made to allow that to continue. And with the stipulation that I, Get a sticker from the truck. I have no problem, no problem with that. Uh, everyone knows who I am. <laughs> I can't say. I agree more. with that. Everyone knows who you are, and I, I definitely agree with that. I just think that once we set a precedent of giving in and allowing someone to do it beyond what the rules are, it sets a precedent, and that could be happening more often than not. Well, unfortunately, there are exceptions to every rule, and I guess that's what I'm asking for at this. This is an exception to the rule. So this one, th none of this is your trash. You're not bringing your trash to That's the house. That's correct. Right. It's just... It's Sherry's house and uh, Pat's house. Mm -hmm. All of it, my ex-wife can do it. Um, like you, you just can't put it in her car? And I'm sorry? You can't put it in her car and bring it? I mean, she has a vehicle and she has the ability to drive. Asking. So if she needs assistance and we had a problem with someone in town or someone who is out of town and driving her vehicle and taking it, that's not the issue. Yeah. She has the ability to drive. It's, 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 it's sad that, that, that we can't make an exception for something. Uh, that this... To me, it's very simple <laughs> to, make it, to make an exception. And an exception doesn't mean that you have to do that for everybody. An exception is an exception. And so the, the, letter, the, the letter is fine with me. Uh, I just hate to bother them. Say, hey, you got to get in the truck with me and come down. But Sharon's got three little ones and, and mom is, but she got a dumpster. She wouldn't have to get in the truck with you. You could take her vehicle and bring her tra her trash to the dump. I don't I mean, it, it, that's a lot of rigor and more to go okay. through. I, when I'm it's loaded, a solution, some, some, sometimes I go to the truck before. But uh, I'm just saying is we have a hard time already trying to get 
everyone to follow the rules, and if we make exceptions, that's it will make us it will tie our hands to someone will have another exception, and yeah. it will just be a domino effect. Well, that's what an exception is. Yeah, I did this, but I don't have to do this one because it doesn't meet the same rules. So uh, all exceptions are not the same. I will, I will leave that with you. I can say no more. Everybody knows what the situation is. Okay. I wish you would discuss it a little bit more okay. and, and see if we can find a way that I can just simply take care of their properties for them. Okay. Uh, would be very helpful. Fair so enough. We'll at, at this point, it. we'll just leave it like that. Hopefully you will. We'll discuss it with Ed and, and George. The, we'll discuss it with Ed and George and get their opinion on it and okay. see what we'll, and we'll get back to you. Okay. All right? Thank you. All right, Ken. Thank you for Thank you. coming down. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I think we need to elect officers. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, I move we uh, elect Denise Knowles as chair of the select board. Second. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we should not throw you into this without Yeah, there's, without uh, there's a, <laughs> a chair, um, vice chair, and clerk. Sorry. And the clerk. This position is, 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 is not really defined and has no innate responsibilities. It, it's mostly going through the, the um, correspondences that we get, and at the meeting we'll present those correspondences to us. Um, so those are the three uh, positions that we have. All right, so we have a motion on the floor to uh, have myself as chair and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. And I'll make a motion to make Miles vice chair. Seconded. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. And uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, appoint Jessica as a clerk. Okay. I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is that all of them? That is all of them, but. Does the board want to revisit any committee appointments or um, even the delegations of who's signing checks and you know doing payroll timesheets or okay. any of those things? So whoever's signing checks cannot approve the invoices. They have to be separate. They have to be separate. Right now I sign. I approve the invoices and Miles is signing the checks. What is the other things that are just... Um, Typically, you're going through the correspondence yeah. folder during the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't pull the red folder. I need to get the red folder, which is how the front office staff gets anything that goes to the board to the board. Okay. So, do you want to take that on? Sure. Okay. This is a folder. Is this one? This, um, is, this is invoices. That's invoices. Yeah. Okay. This so, um, your okay. <laughs> and she'll get the red folder. And those are all things that we have to discuss at the meeting. Got it. Okay. Can you stay here? Yep, no, you're not yes. going to take it, yeah, you'll have to yep. go through them tonight. Mm -hmm. um, and At then, the end of the meeting, you can go through what's in the folder and talk about it with the board members and if there's a decision to be made about it. It, it, it just, um, some of it's purchase orders that come from my office. There's a variety of things in there and just mm -hmm. to bring them to the attention of the board. Okay. Okay. I'm fine um, staying, signing checks. Um, we probably should get her signature and my signature card. Yes, I'll take care of that. Okay. Yeah, so it only requires one select board member to sign yeah. the checks, right? Always the treasurer. And then the treasurer and the select board member. Yeah, I signed one. Mm -hmm. like you can, you're on the account. Yeah, you yeah. you have no yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so we'll get you to sign the signature yeah. card like, um, okay. as well. So in case my office aren't going to be able to do it. Okay. Um, but most of the time, one of us is the sure about it. Also, Caroline, I'm sure we'll sit with you sometime when you have time and she can go over all of those processes. I would love that opportunity. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. Okay. Free um, so, do we want to kind of like think about what we have for committees right yeah. now? Write down the responsibilities and maybe table it until next week? I can make up a new meeting. list and see, show see you all where you all are at yeah. and what, what's what we can. Kind of you and I'll send that to well. you as well, so you can see a full list of yeah. what they serve on and what you might be interested. You can start thinking about what okay. you might be interested. Okay. That's a good okay. idea. Okay. So we'll table that for the next time. Okay. Um, and did you have something else on there? That was it. Thank you. Okay. 
All right, so... Um, oh, minutes, I'm good. Oh, you're good? Okay. Um, when we do the minutes, we do a uh, consensus, and that's a an issue, so we don't have to officially make a vote, we just say approved by consensus. Since you weren't, you haven't seen them, but you weren't part of the board, yeah. they'll just be miles and miles this time. Great. But going forward, it will be all of us, okay? So, um, consensus? Yep. Okay, so minutes have been approved of consensus. Okay, so I? Okay. And that was the fifth. Yes. Okay. August fifth. Okay. Um, okay. Community input. No more community. All right. So, are we going to go by who's here or who? The way the list shows. Can I go first. Yes. So okay. the fire chief. They're, they're Chief Rutherford. If I could slide in there. Only because. Chief Duchamp and George Bennett is head of highway. This is our new. Board member Jessica. Good luck. You might have to listen a little this one because well we got we got two pieces of equipment out of town. The lightning storm put three building fires that we're off planning at. So thank you guys for letting me slide forward. A um, couple of pieces of business. Uh, Order number 1660 from the State of New Hampshire Department of Safety for uh, our newest member going through this firefighter level one certification. Uh, there's a slight change as I've always told you that I don't pay uh, for me to fill the uh, member of the same certification. I'm flipping that this time for one main reason. He lives in town. And that is a huge. Uh, a huge access right. I'll just listen to when the engine comes back. <laughs> um, two engines actually, but uh, the engine's the same. But he lives in town, okay. and he's been very, very, very active. So I'm gonna. Well, you know, what I want to know is just pay it forward, and when he gets it, he's gonna pay it back. Okay. Yeah, that's the only reason. I'm just they pay. Them, they pay some back. They always pay some. They always pay something though. He was the first guy. Oh. Jason. You do usually only pay 50%. Yes. Oh, okay. That's, and that's the thing. same way with this one. Because he's taking the satellite program. We have one member now that's in the fire academy, at the academy, going through uh, the recruit school. Okay. He lives there. He's there for three months. That's one of the weekends. Um, so we'll square up with that when he's all done. Uh, this is a satellite program run by the fire academy because it's being held in Rock. So it's easier for him. He still has a full time job, so he's able to go to the evening classes that he has to be at. But they sent me the bill the other day, and I talked to them, and then dealing with them is like, I'm not going to talk to them. So I just wanted to kind of square this away out front, and then we'll, we'll regroup once he gets done in the fall. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's my background on that. So it's, for, it's uh, $845. The funds are still available within our training line. I own this, still uh, funding there to uh, the analyst request. So uh, I'll move purchase order 1660 um, to the state of New Hampshire uh, Department of Safety, $845 for firefighter, firefighter level one certification. Okay, I'm second it. So my own, oh, my only question is um, the reimbursing of the course. How, where does it end? We're we in August, it ends in uh, December. December. It doesn't go back into the account, right? Well, when? it's all about when in December. Um, so if I think I understand your question, we would have to deposit the funds in December to offset, like to, to be in December's. Oh, no, I was wondering, it, I thought it would be earlier than that. Okay, so I was wondering is if, if he paid us back, if that would put money back into his training account so he'd be able to use something else, but December's kind of late anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You know what I'm saying? You know, because it doesn't, it, it goes... December doesn't mean we can't get get payment out. for yeah. December. Yeah, if that becomes an issue, I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, it's like four dollars. Yeah, like, yeah. Really I just fine. didn't know where it would go. Right. If we like lost the, the ability to use it for on the training, is that my point? Was. Well, 
Well, I know it will happen. Well, I, I see where you're going, but it's the same thing you and I have talked about in the last bit of reimbursement to the fire department. Fire department's not making it better. <laughs> if we can work on it that way, I mean, you can make it so it goes back into the town's general fund. Well, that's, what that, that's essentially right. what it will. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Okay. All right. Um, so um, the motion to be uh, made and seconded. Any discussion? Any questions? No? No? No, I think I'm good. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. It is
as if somebody requests it from me is locked and secured in my office. Okay, so I have total access. If it needs to be used by the captain or the other two chiefs, they request it from me, I will give them permission. It's not where anybody can grab it and just go off and do their own. So whatever's on the card, you're taking you're taking 100 percent responsibility for it. Yeah. Okay. The credit card itself is not limited per purchase. It, they, anybody who has a credit card with the town is limited to $1,000 a month. So it's a policy change, it is all. About how you would want to, if you want to change that $200 limit. I didn't know if that was part of where you were going with No, I just wanted to make sure that because we have a higher limit, that we're not going to go, we're going to go out and use the credit card without maybe using purchase orders that we should be no, using no. and getting pre approval no. versus using the credit card when you don't need pre approval. No. Oh, oh, I understand exactly where you're going with that. Okay. This is a super isolated incident as I far agree. as after spending it that high. The only no. reason I did it was because when I put all the pieces together, it only made sense. And I'm not at okay. all Going out and having to spend a thousand dollars on a given time, unless it's some sort of, I don't want to say emergency, but it's at that point where we need it because we got to have it now. Mm -hmm. It's the only time that would happen. Everything else I'm still purchase order, okay. still planning for, we're still going to go through that route. This was just that one time super isolated incident. And, and, and that's why I would like to see it bumped up. So if we have this issue again, the freedom is there without having to cause any conflict. So would you also want them next day, because sometimes their stuff is in the middle of the night or whatever, that's when what they have to do. Yeah, yeah no, I know. Yeah. Night. So would you want them, like Mark, to tell you the next day, just let you know this is what we did. So, so then you're you're when you see it, you're expecting it. So there, there are kind of two different points here, and I think however the board chooses to handle it, it ought to be handled through a revision to the policy. Since there is a credit card agreement that cardholders have to sign, and we have a purchasing policy. So what is the limit under which credit card holders can spend, spend freely within things that are budgeted? Mm -hmm. And then, if there's an exception to that, under what circumstances is there an exception to that? Mm -hmm. Also in the policy. Okay. Um, I, I just want to note, not that you both, uh, all three of you, would, would know that your other two department heads in the back are probably, that you can't see it, nodding their heads vigorously that they are sharing this frustration with the credit card and purchasing policy $200 limit. Um, so, so, but also the purchasing, the PO policy, the, the, the PO threshold ought to be changed accordingly because it doesn't make sense that you can spend $500 on a credit card, right. but if you get an invoice from a vendor, you can only spend up to $200 because why wouldn't they always use a credit, credit card? card. Mm -hmm. No, but, you know, one, it's that no we, it's, we can discuss this, and you know, as long as it isn't like we last discussed raising, mm -hmm. it's just it's something that just needs to be addressed at this point. The only reason I do it. I called her that night. Before I did this, mm -hmm. actually I had guys in the room to go get the batteries and I called Caroline and said, this is what I have going on. Mm -hmm. I can turn them around and bring them back. But now you're talking a $2,000 bill. Mm -hmm. So, so. Oh, I get it. He, he, he didn't put it on a credit card, but instead at my request got the yeah. input, the vendor to Did invoice us, us, which works better because it's not a violation of the credit card policy. Mm -hmm. It's just the violation of the purchasing policy, which is kind of ongoing for all department heads when they hit an emergency, it, you know. So, so it's, it's kind of one infraction instead of a double infraction. I get emergencies, I do. All of you. I mean, that is just, it happens, and I know that. But I just want to make sure that, you know, we're not going to stop one policy for another. And you're right, we have to look at both of them. Right, so... And probably 200 is, like, shouldn't be it. If you the know. board can think about the concept of the lines, I know, I know, the the amounts you want to talk about and what constitutes an emergency and mm -hmm. things like that, then I can get you a new draft of the policy. Yep, I think we need a new draft for both of the policies. Yes, the POs and and the yes. uh, credit card. But also, don't want him to have to wait when we do reviewing, if something else comes up. So Just what kind of a... Sure. Yep, yep, yep. we got to make sure we got to go do that first. I'll be okay. right back. So, you know, I mean, I'm talking about all department heads, really. I mean, 
when it's an emergency, there should be some flexibility. There's flexibility in the yeah. policy for emergencies, as there already are. When somebody has a vehicle down, they go and they deal with it. They mm -hmm. don't wait for mm -hmm. the next board meeting to, for permission to get a PO, to go get a vehicle, mm -hmm. they do it. So we're covered as far as, you know, it's, it's just the status quo of how things have been handled. It's an invoice, um, it's a PO after the fact, is mm -hmm. what it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So, so everybody's fine in terms of emergencies. It's just, um, it's just about how the. I, I'm not sure what the credit card policy says about emergencies, whether or not it recognizes it at all. Um, and then the purchase order limit, and making sure that the the, um, the credit card policy is in line with the purchasing policy. So I don't think that it requires any action tonight, except right. for if you wanted to discuss where is the board at with whether or not there's change and to what level, then I can go back and create a draft for your review next week. Well, I next think that's what we need. We need, to, we need to get the policies sent to the three of us. Let's review them. Let's put it on the agenda for our next meeting. And in the event that you run into an emergency, in the this if you did this last one, then notify Caroline. And then we'll be notified until we can get you up. Um, yeah, that's fine. I'm more than willing to do that. Okay. Like I said, I'm willing to take the hit. Because it's okay. something it's that I, get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. I understand. You get to slot. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, just, I mean, there are emergencies in, in fire trucks, highway trucks, they're all costly. Sure. And you need to get them done. You need to get it fixed. Right? Exactly. So I that's get it. Where we were. And, you know, by, by our NFBA standards, ISO standards, well, you know, you can't sit with one fire truck. I get two of you next town over. So, so we got to be in that. I appreciate you looking at for the town's interest, saving us money. I constantly do that. And I explain, even on those invoices that I gave to Caroline, the batteries were 130 bucks. But when the guy went up there, he knew it was for a fire department purchase, and he put it under somebody else's account, JT Lines or something, and knocked another $25 off his battery. And unless driving in there, doing it that way, and the fire department stuff, we saved almost a lot of bucks. Mm -hmm. Just off the top. So. Yeah. So, um, actually, I got some more of that. Well, it's just an update. I just want you to know where we're at since we're talking, you know, batteries that failed one of our fire trucks. Um, we're doing our uh, vehicle inspections starting now. We're jump starting usually after the end August by September. Forestry went in the other day and failed. When I knew it was going to fail, we had brakes. Five hundred lights. Rear brakes. Um, engine one. Battery issue. But now, it's not going to pass because it needs tires. Tires are almost $800 a piece. We're talking $3,000 to put tires in front of it. happen? It's the only way it's going to be stay on the road next to Between those two expenditures, we've discussed this, it exhausts the vehicle repair money. Or I'm right at the bare minimum. We have a solution. I've discussed the solution on what I want to do. It does just an upcoming expenditure that we've got to have. We have already researched the fact that we go through go the tires. Large tires on heavy equipment like that goes through Sullivan Tire, the truck division by Crosby. They want 900 bucks a tire. I've already researched it. I can get it down to 720 bucks a tire. I got to take the fire truck to Sanford, but that's a short drive, say almost 600 bucks. So that's where we are now. Now, you have to replace four? Each. If you're going to replace one or two, the outside ones are wearing more just because of the way the truck turns. And the thing with, uh, with engine two, with engine one, it's the four tires on the back are steering tires. They don't have an aggressive tread. Even when they were still uh, salvageable tires, the truck was lousy in the winter. It went down its own way. So if you're going to replace those two, you've got to do all four for the rear. You cannot piece them this stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're going to do a one done, won't be tires again for 10 years. Okay, so do you have a few? Right, George? Absolutely. When it comes to tires, I don't have the PO now because okay. I'm still doing the research on okay. it. And I was going to solve that tonight, but all my guys are over in Dover and someplace else right now, so I don't know if I'm going to solve that. Okay. But I I wanted to give you that quick brief update. And uh, you know, 99% of the sure it's going to be the same for not new PO. Okay. But we'll have all that data ahead of time. But I wanted you to understand where we were, so what we were doing, and why we were doing. Now, how is your budget? How is this budget in whole? I mean, does he have the ability to move some things to give him an emergency? Oh, yeah. emergency. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me right. just note, since we're talking about purchase orders and, and he's preparing for purchase, but the board isn't meeting for three weeks. 
because in two weeks we have Labor Day. So the next meeting is the 9th. Well, we might need the next meeting. Well, I'm just saying, oh, okay. like, you know, it's something else to consider with the purchasing policy. It, it ties in evaluating how does the board consistently meet every other week if that's what the board wants to continue to do. Purchase orders are one of the things that are going to hold people up. So it doesn't it, have to because communication, it doesn't have to. communication skills and telling us that there's something we can meet that Monday that we weren't planning on it if it needed to be. Right, but you can also address it in the purchasing policy. How? What, what are you suggesting? Well, giving you the authority to sign a certain value. Or, you know, between a certain value yeah. or, or something like that. You can certainly do that. Or under certain circumstances yeah. or something. Yeah. But also, though, just because we're going every other week, department heads, doesn't mean we can't come in and have an emergency meeting if we had to. So just make sure you guys understand that. Um, so. The only concern I've had with that, of course, is the fact that, you know, vendors, that sometimes it's pushing them back. I'm, I'm of the, I run my department here in town, the same way I run my stuff at home. Some on my desk, it gets paid now. I like to do the same thing with what happens in the community. I don't want to have anything coming back and get past two notices and stuff. Like that. But we That's shouldn't get past two notices. You're still within sure. 30 days and I get all that stuff, but I don't look at my desk. They're still so approving want. bills so that bills can Right, so bills can come in. Okay. And we was, I mean, we We're still processing them in the office. Yeah. So, and, and that's all happening okay. anyway. And we've already talked about giving her authority at a certain level as well. So. Do you have any question about my budget? Yeah, do you I have flexibility? Have, oh, I have the latest two print off right here that you sent me the other day. Uh, and this is up until August 1st, you sent it to me. And it's 43% that I spent. Okay. And the reason why I brought that up again with the vehicle repair line is I know there's some lines in here that will more than cover. Because that, We'll get everything done Friday. There's nothing else that's going to come up between now and September and inspection time. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we can skate through to the end of the year without any other big issues. Mm -hmm. But there's some line items within my budget that I will not go after to make sure I have enough for budget. One of them, it's the same one we play with all the time. If I had the money and I didn't need to spend yeah. it, I'd go get my hose. But if I have something else that's yeah. a lot more pressing, yeah. we're fine with the hose now. I can always augment it, but um, that would be one place where I know we can make yeah. that stuff. On his budget right now, he has 3,000 in the hose. Mm -hmm. So he's saying that that's something that yeah. you can never tell. It's a big fire. I mean, you know, there's a lot of hose, but you know. Sure. We might lose something. Well, yeah. you know what one piece of four inch hose costs now? So I ain't getting much. Yeah. But the thing of it is, is that uh, I'm not really notifying the same thing. I'm going to end up doing this up. But uh, I just wanted to give you all the update on that stuff. Okay. I mean, even if we say you know, we have another $1,000 spend for vehicle repairs to come out, I'll still have money most likely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you for listening. I'm sorry if I had all my toys. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Good evening. Bob? George just went out the door. <laughs> yeah, he's going to talk to Mark for a minute. Oh, okay. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, boy. Thank you. Just my card. And give me a call next couple of days. I need to set you up with security here. Oh, okay. Need some information. Give me a lot. Got it. Okay. Back in June, we had uh, an issue with the camera system. We had three cameras up and down. We had a service call for technologies that came in. We had to do something with the, the software. What they need to do. I anticipated the bills come in at $199 or $200. It came in at $202.50. So, I have a purchase order number here, 1696 to Pro Technologies, the amount of $202.50, and that will come out of Town Hall Repairs. So this was building cameras, not cruising cameras? Right, this is building cameras. Uh, so I'll move purchase order 1696 to Pro Technologies for $202.50 uh, for emergency repair of the building video. 
Scott Senator. All right. For discussion.
for the amount of $300, and then again, we'll come out of town hall meetings. Motion to accept first order 1698 to Townsend for $300. Uh, I second that. Any discussion? Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Motion passed. Um, yes. Did they say anything about the furnace and the, what is it, a hole in it or something? A cover? Yeah, the, cover? The, the cover has a hole in it. Yeah. And of course the insurance company is concerned because, you know, holes are less you know, line of defense mm -hmm. should the internal mechanism fail and you possibly have fire coming out of it. Um, Townsend says it really doesn't need to be replaced, it's just that it's not looks bad. Well, Dick Boyer had mentioned that he thought it should be replaced as well, right? Well, yes, but not so much that it needed to be, be replaced, so much as that was the only deficiency you could see in the Boyer. Okay. So it's not something that, I don't know, what, what, it's not something that you could put a, like a metal patch Maybe over? Maybe probably put a piece of sheet metal on it. Does that, cover it up, yeah. would that be acceptable with the insurance company? I would think so, but it seems to me that, I, I don't know because it's rather old, but they should be able to buy a part for it and just, yeah, which may be more expensive. Yeah, have yeah. to screw it back on. Yeah. I can check with them. See if they can see if we can the price on that. Sure. All right, I appreciate that. Any others? I do, yes. Okay. Um, back when we discussed the proposed salaries for all the officers mm -hmm. several months ago, mm -hmm. Um, Officer Brooks was set to uh, have his pay increased as of August 4th to 2222, mm -hmm. and so we just need to have the select board sign off on that. So Caroline has that in her records. We had already voted on this. Yes. yes. And it doesn't have your name on there because we didn't know about you. So, um, <laughs> so we'll let this go ahead. And but in the future, we'll in the future, sure yeah. Talk, yes. <laughs> May I keep this and then I'll give you a copy? Okay. Thank you. And the last item on the, that I have for the board is uh, Officer Hancock, or Sergeant Hancock, in his carryover for his uh, vacation time from 2019 to 2020. He carried over uh, 62 hours and 62.54 hours. Um, he's only used six hours of that carry over from 62 hours from last year. I'm asking the board to waive the July 1 cutoff where he would lose his carryover, where we've been so short-handed for the first six months of the year, and allow him to open and use the rest of it between now and the end of the year. And it still might be difficult because he's scheduled to work with Jared um, when she graduated from Academy this coming Friday, so this Friday, this, yeah. this Friday that has been 15, and 15 weeks already. Um, so I'm just having to vote at the point waiving that. So what is the policy? The policy is that any time, any accrued time um, from one one year's earnings that you do not use, you have until June 30th of the following year to use. In addition to whatever you're accruing that following year, um, and then it expires. You can't carry your time indefinitely. It expires six months after the previous year ends. I think that this is an extenuating circumstance because of we lost um, how many? Three? Two? Well, two and, we and one out for illness. So we were down three police officers this year mm -hmm. uh, due to just two leaving and, and one illness. So there was what he carried over this year, do you think? And then carry over this year's to next? Well, that's, that's what the plan is. Try, okay. try to get him to use as much as he can, as soon as possible. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to tr keep on carrying, carrying, carrying right. over. You know, I mean, worst, use... worst case scenario, depending on what we have for surplus, there will be some surplus because of the, the, uh, the uh, 
line items for the salaries. Um, uh, if he does have an exorbitant amount to carry over again, uh, we might do like we did last year. We could pay him for a couple of weeks rather than mm -hmm. letting you take time off and paying some of them to cover for you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the long run, it would still benefit the town if we just, we just paid him, get it off the books, I suppose, to have someone take the place to work those shifts. So. I agree, but there is there is. But, but, but at some point you have to. Well, there is something to be said about having time off and recovering oh, yeah, and, and getting yourself yeah. back yeah. energized and stuff. So I wouldn't want him to not take some time off. But if he, I mean, he's, he's still got some time left. Well, you know, if, if you're looking at the 62 carryover and he's, he's used six, um, by the end of the year he'll have almost 180 hours all total. So. That he needs to carry. Yeah. Needs to carry. yeah. yeah. Well, let's use the carryover first, first please, sure. and then we can talk about the other one later. But, um, yeah, I'd like to see him have some fun. <laughs> but, well, I'm sure he'll take some time off. Just let me know. Okay. We'll be able to take you the entire time. Uh, that's all that I have for you. Well, I guess I do agree with the, with the fire chief. Um, uh, obviously, my bills aren't as big as his bills. Or the Howie Department yeah. bills, but. Uh, event that uh, you know, something for twenty ten dollars, twenty fifty dollars pops up and then go back and get your hands right you know, two weeks later you're gonna be here to get the purchase of the sign out. True. I just want well, I think just comments and I know yeah. we talked about the beginning of the year, but yeah. I know you guys are busy and I just got you know, kind of on the back. So at least we can open the discussion again. Absolutely. Sure. I, I think they will discuss like all three departments it will all be like it'll be for all of them, yeah. the, yeah. the uh, public safety, the three of them, just we'll, we'll address it. That's, the That's all that I have to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
The second thing is there is a significant amount of money left in the road budget, and I was speaking with Billy and David about the cost of doing the side by on the fire station. Mm -hmm. Where I worked with him, prepping driveways and stuff before, he told me, so if you prep that driveway, which you're very capable of doing, mm -hmm. we'll do the paving for just the price of the top of it. Laying it down at their price of $120 a time, which is a six, about a $6,000 savings. Mm -hmm. So I put it in for $14,000. And we have the money there, which is still going to give us a good surplus. But we're still going to have $10,000 by the time we get done all these projects. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, something I'd like to do. Have you talked to Mark? Yeah. And he's on board? Absolutely. Okay, so it's from, it's the whole length of the building. The whole length of the building is the dirt parking lot, right? And then it's going to go, and then you're going to have a, 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 a road like to go onto the road. See? Yeah. The width of the building? Yeah. It's, uh, it's just on the other side, side of the building, the fire station. Yeah. Yeah. And all that dirt parking lot will be cleaned up yep. and paved. Okay. That's awesome. The That's parking lot's in there. It is in the winter, for yes. sure. For sure. And there's so, nothing you can do about I mean, it in the winter. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. So, I, I, and that may be a little eye also. So, we might have some gravel in it. The gravel is good there, it's just going to be regraded, pitched away from the building so the water runs off. Yep. Okay. So, we, that's stuff we can do ourselves. Now, on the other side of the station, is that all Mark needs there? Is that. Is, I, I no, 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 I don't mean backwards, I mean I, this way a little bit. It's a single lane. They, but I didn't get into any of the front of it and stuff, yeah. where we fixed last year or anything like that. But in stormwater, we're talking about we have to have some uh, oil recovery, yeah. you know, drainage and stuff I like that. So it along right now. I, my suggestion mm -hmm. is to leave it till we get the, yep. have the right pitch and get everything going the right way. Yep. So yep, I, I mean, uh, I have POs for all this. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do them individually? Or do you well, let's go through it. I want to go over the whole list first. For her benefit, it's okay. okay. And then uh, the Church Street uh, water issue we have down there, I believe we can fix that for about $1,500. Just pay the fund of angles of the water station the road, and then we'll just fill it up right it. They'll have a little ramp to get up instead of, you know, a little pothole or whatever. And the water will all run down Church Street to the corner. We'll go down into the river. Guide wheel on Sligo Road. We, uh, I looked at different options, making them myself. I got to wait for a price from uh, Middleton Lumber right now, but it's, it's, it's a guide wheel material. It's all pressure treated instead of having a metal guide wheel, it would be more, look better for that area. Do it be it. all wood versus no metal? No metal. Oh, okay. On both sides? Yeah, on both sides. Now, when we waiting for approval to do that? No, not, not, this, guard, no. not this section? Not the guardrail. No, the guardrail is not the Oh, okay. I didn't talk about guardrail for the... Well, we're going to go through pipe, and then they're going to have to go with the expensive the guardrail that okay. they installed them okay. with the crash barriers and all that. Okay. Towns have the option of doing their own thing with guardrails and the pipe. You'll see some place where they have the cables. Okay. The but the, but the, um, the permit, I think she's... Oh, the orange, yeah. the, the, the chance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think she's yeah. asking yeah. carrying the guide wheels. Have nothing to do with that. And we're not going to touch the other side unless we're going to, we won't do the other side until it's finished. Okay, okay. But I've so still got the price of material so we can at least have it when we're ready, when we're ready to do it. Okay, all right. I will check that out, but okay. I, I think we are. All right, I just have to, have to ask somebody... My, my guess is we're almost three months into this already. Mm -hmm. There was a 75 day window. If they don't come and look at it, there's not going to be no commitment for it. Okay. I just want to make sure. It's a maintenance issue. Right? Okay. You know, and it's a maintenance issue versus a yep. rebuild issue. Yep. And Karen said that, you know, sometimes they won't even come and look at it and say, just fix what you're going to fix. Because you're not, we're not going to interfere with the water flow or anything like that. We're just trying to shore up the bankers. Right, right. You know, and, and that's usually a maintenance issue. Okay. And concern is, you know, like I said, we're almost 90 days into this project. Mm -hmm. We're already waiting for permission, permitting. And we haven't heard nothing or seen nothing. All right, so. but you're not doing it tomorrow, right? No. No, okay, so no, we'll just. We don't need to do it. Okay, we'll just, um, just talk to Aaron. Right. 
Uh, and then we have a turning the juice board quickly, of course, that you see. There is no culprits in there that we could find whatsoever. And my, the best thing that we come up with would be to put a storm drain on each corner before we put it into the uh, cul-de-sac. Put one main storm drain in the center of the cul-de-sac, bank this down, have it run into the right away. Total material price was about six or seven thousand dollars. So, did we go in there and clean that out yet? Clean it out. Oh, okay. We tried to find it. Just, like we was told okay. that was no there was there's no drainage. There's no drainage in the center of that uh, or anything. And it, and it was full. Of, I mean, maybe naturally, you know, it looked like there was some dumping there. But so, do you think it wasn't the leaf built up in there that was causing it to? No, I mean, you can see where the water runs down the side of the road. It has no place to go, so it's going into the yards and okay. stuff like that. Okay. So where, where the road comes down straight and goes into the color sack, we'll think of The plan shows that there was a storm drain yeah. on the left side of the road going down yeah. that went into the center and then out to the other side into the right way. I'm sure that if they brought it out, then they really brought it out, mm -hmm. but we couldn't find nothing. I tried both sides and where the cracks in the road where you think they'd be a bike, there was we couldn't find that. So my thought is to put a catch basin, just a basin on each side of the road mm -hmm. and run it to a big uh, culvert in the side, in the center of it and run all of it out. So it has a place to catch the, the dirt and stuff that doesn't grow out in the woods mm -hmm. and then call the catch basin to be clean. Mm -hmm. Instead of uh, you know, they just have a small slope on the top so the water all right there's the catch base in the center of the top. Instead of having a big place where they can dump stuff or no belong here. They, they don't take care of it, we can run the ball over there. Okay. But that would be, you know, something that I think would be a, a better fix than trying to put cow uh culvers in mm -hmm. in the driveways. Most of the water's gonna get stopped before it gets to the covers. So how does that his plan affect it does not affect stormwater because it's not going, it, there's no outlet into the a river or water system. Okay. Yeah. No, so it's, it would be to take care of the water issue that they have in that neighborhood, even if they would create a personal problem by themselves. Okay. But uh, that's, you know, what we looked at. Of course, these are the price are estimated the high, it should be lower than anything, and it's still going to give us over 10000 so we've got, we've looked and we've got the bill, the big bills are already out of there. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, we've been for the road projects, which... That's where you need to be using that. Okay. So, um, so, um, do you have any questions? No, no. Okay. So you can do purchase order by purchase order. I purchase order for about three thousand dollars of pepper concrete that would be for a slab on top of the culvert down on Sligo if being necessary. So, so do you have purchase orders for like? Okay, this is this is an outside contractor that we'll pay. Mm -hmm. We um, they'll bring so the concrete in. That's it. They'll okay. just bring the concrete to us. All right. And if you know, we need it. Um, I'll move purchase order 1667 to Pepin Concrete for up to $3,000. Okay. And when they have to buy green power and stuff, I want to put it in to make it stronger. Is it accepted for a second? Second. Mm -hmm. All right. Any further discussion on this? Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.
the best for the fire station parking lot. Does it say it on there? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All those in favor say aye. 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 It's not something you're going to use every day and you're going to use it 
the spring, you're going to use it in the fall. So the leaf clean up and I think it'll help us a lot to keep a lot of the leaves out of the strong grain system. If you don't know, use it. I, I, I don't know what you do. You know what's left of that. This is a cube
have to pay for it in such. Um, that's the material he's referring to. I think they sent me a bunch of other things regarding um, child labor laws from the Department of Labor. So we have a bunch of information to read through. Um, their primary recommendation is, is you need a job description. And, and then calling it like, you know, sort of a student work study position or something like that would be helpful um, as opposed to, um, it, it's clear that, that this position isn't open to doing all of the regular duties that somebody else would be able to do. And it, that needs to be reflected in the job description so that it's clear why you're hiring some people over other people. Um, but it's not that it's not allowed necessarily or discouraged even from the insurance company. Now, is this going, are you going to the school through this? I haven't program? talked to the school. I want to bring it up. Where does this going? Where going to be going to Okay. okay. So. Um, and they will have to have with the papers from the school either way. Right, right. Why don't you just kind of get everything together and so do you want me to help them? We'll work on a job description for yep. the board to evaluate. Yeah, and, and based on the information from the insurance companies all, as well. Right. You know, I, I, I mean, it makes it a lot more exceptional for parents. The way I read it, tonight, uh, where if they're in the job, they, the school uh, works like for them. They, they get a little bit more legal. Of course, not with tools. It's, you know, certain tools. But that would also mean. Yeah, working with the school right. and that's and, correct. I mean, yeah, and, that, and that's a different whole level of thing than just having a job description for a job right. opportunity that's good for students who want to learn. Because what is it? What is his availability? He's in school Monday through Friday. Oh yeah, they, they can work so many hours like in the afternoon. So they can come in. But you go home at three thirty. Oh, four thirty right now. Okay. Well, but it's summer though. Right. That's only summer. And in the summertime. Well, because you're working a ten hour day. Right. But I mean, we could. When he's in, I work even to. With the school approval, I did some of the stuff for the time. Well, summer, yeah, that's a, that's a, right. you're asking now, which is the right. school right. year, and you don't work right. Saturdays. Yeah, they, days off. So but we could use them as a transfer station. Okay. You know, it depends, you know, as long as you don't have to ask machine reading and stuff. Okay. Like, you know, we have an extra set of hands to get cleaned up around the yeah. or whatever. Okay. So if you're suggesting that this is a program that the school is accrediting in some way, mm -hmm. which would allow him to miss school hours in order to work and learn, that's going to be a bigger process to work with the school with right. this job description to make sure that there are learning objectives and other things that result in what exactly, is he like certified in something or is he got some kind of, you know, like, like, what is the goal as far as the school is concerned if they want to go through yeah, that. But that's not going to be a quick process. No, no, I, know, I, I understand that, but I mean, that would help us get him to be able to do other things, too. I mean, if the school, you know, see what we're going for, even if, I'm sure they could work things out to get this program to be quicker once we approach it. You know? The other thing is, I mean, we also have the grade school that maybe people be learning something with Dick. Yes. You know, in but the functionings of, you know, what Dick does at the school. I mean, if it's if the school is allowing it, we might be able to work together with the school as well on some opportunities there because they have night work versus right. you guys don't. So, so I think this is going to end up in a select board school board conversation yeah. over a policy because yeah. this is a program. Right. You know, this is, and maybe the school can give us something to their GoTech Go uh, program. They may have something that they can give us to work with. But process with, with right. school board and yeah, school board. Yeah, I was a mechanic's helper when I did a mechanic's helper. I was driving this out when I was 16 years old. Yeah, well, that's that you know, then. Of course, the church is today and on. You know, but. Yeah. That, and, but they're talking about trying to get the trades back out mm -hmm. there. And mm -hmm. I think there's a perfect opportunity to try to get some of that going. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, it gives us extra help. It gives, you know, it gives them some of the knowledge of what we do and different kinds of things we do. It may be, depending on how quickly you want to move this along, maybe a two stepped approach of developing a job description and having the board decide that you 
do or don't approve the job description and the idea of this as an employee, while at the same time working with the school board mm -hmm. about a program and if they're interested in talking about a program and working out the details of that, mm -hmm. because that's going to take a number of months, whereas it's a job description and the board approval can have a relative. Mm -hmm. you, you still have an open, yeah, we have, you have an open right. I mean, you have an open transfer station job. Right? Right. That's it. Which he could probably only do Saturdays. Right? Saturdays. Well, 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 but he's. Well, right now we get the Monday nights. Yeah. Um, but well, I know, but that's. Yeah. I think you're, you're rushing it. Yeah, no, we have to make sure that we get everything for right. Wednesday, Monday night. And that's what you've got to wait That's what my point, yeah. 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 But, I mean, you still get your Saturdays, and mm -hmm. then if, if he has time after school to come in for an hour or two, you know, wash the truck. You know, the stuff you can do, you know. Well, that's not trade, though. I no, mean, but we, you're mixing things up a little no, bit. I mean, if you're looking for a part-time employee, that's one thing. If you're looking for a trade to, to well, I'm trying teach to build people. Well, both into both, you know. Okay, well, then that's a little different. It's going to be, so, so that's where the job description is going to matter, mm -hmm. and, and your right. job description for the job now may be different from what this program is going to look like with the school. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If they're looking for trade, you know, then, then they want practical hands-on experience. Right. right. Which would be the summertime, mostly, because right. that's when you're doing your jobs, your, you know, most of your big work. But, but I mean, if, if you could come in, you know, if you get through the school program, then you give them like the afternoons. If there was more projects, you could be involved with that sort of stuff. I think that requires more did. discussion. Right, I mean, it's not, you know, that's why I, I wanted to bring it up. Yeah. You know, um, let's just kind of look at job descriptions and see. Um, and have him do some homework working with the school to see what the school location yeah, part of it, um, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's a good idea as long as it's for the right purpose. The new truck, the new truck morning is will be delivered now, September 20th. Let's hope we get it before it's no, not As soon as the body comes in, they're putting it in the shop. They're going to jump over there. I've had many discussions with these people. And I'll tell you what, it'll be a long time before I want to go with them again. I mean, it's, there's, there's no need for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think next time we have a new person for another truck, they ought to be a cause and they're going to do the delivery date. Penalty if they don't need it. Yeah. And that's what's happening. Yeah. Have, these companies are taking advantage of not having and everybody that has the clause in there has the truck. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's an oversight on my part, probably this time, but that we, you know, I think in, it was a demo. Yeah, the, the truck, truck in there, right there. there. The truck was there in March. Right, yeah. right. We were sitting in their lot. Right. There's no reason whether they use the body on somebody else's truck. If, you know, and they had to be the deadline. Mm -hmm. I don't know that, and you'll never know that. Mm -hmm. So I just, I've been, again, on the phone with a month.
Maybe we can do... Yeah. Um, well, I want you to talk to Ed and kind of talk to your people and see what's best fit for them. And then we can... I mean, the, cloud, the cloud guys, it's, it's just my diary. Tim is basically be available. We can call like on Monday before they open the business. Well, I work. That's right. So, Miles works. <laughs> Tell me. We'll, we'll work it out. Yeah, it would have to probably be an evening, an evening or, or a Saturday morning, if it worst case scenario. Yeah. So. I think they get. Probably It could also be a Monday night, maybe the first Monday that is. That the transfer station is not open, mm -hmm. that the board starts meeting there, yep. Yep. or just do its meet, you know, not yep. do its meeting there, but maybe that's an option. Yeah, I could probably give Jimmy and Mike to make on open. Yeah, we just want to have to give the same yeah. opportunity to your right. your staff and the transfer staff yeah, that we gave to the police and fire, and I think we need to have open communication with all departments, and it's just our way of doing that. So. See what you can I, I, talk to your people and I'll see what is best and will work yeah, around it. No, we moved it to September. We moved it to September. So it's it's the end of September. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 yeah, so we can, yeah, you just tell us um, if Monday works and we can maybe start our meeting a little earlier. Yeah. And, you know, what time do you get? Five forty or so. Okay. All right. So, but yeah. So just get back to us on that. What works for you? We'll leave it on the agenda. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kate brought up a point this morning. Caroline and I were speed limits again. But she was really helping. They speed limits maybe been wrong. You know, it won't make a bit of difference. No, it won't. And, and that's what we said. But I figured I'd bring it up. So, are you working okay. on um, double yellow lines? Because it might be a good time, if you're going to do double yellow lines, include the sidewalk line on Heritage at the same time. Yeah. You change the paint. What? You change the paint color, it's going to appear across. Yeah. We can do it without a shoot. It takes three, five yellow, and then just the, just the, the sidewalk the, line. The sidewalk line. Because the other the other one is a company that we hired to do the double yellow. Yes, yeah. yeah, right. And that company has been they will be coming into it. So reducing like visually reducing the width of the road may help. The road's wide should we come. Yeah. Just take it five feet off the side to have a walk area. It may slow people down. It looks like the sidewalk is definitely cheap with but the sidewalk we could have $150 If she's got time speeding, she needs to talk to Chief Duchamp. I mean, apparently she's coming. They've been there with no time stories. Yeah, I mean, we all have our speeders on every road there is, but I mean, that's, right, you know, that's Bobby's responsibility. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I, I, I still think the sidewalk thing is a good idea. Yep. And that might get terrible a little bit. Do you know. do it on both sides or just no, one, one side? We'll at least give people a, a safer place to, to walk. To walk. Mm -hmm. Which I think of. <laughs> but we can't take five feet out of that road. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I understand yeah, a lot of people walk out of that road. So, uh, we're going to probably post downtown no parking on night so we can get the early morning painting in before and sweeping before. As soon as I hear from the sweeper, I'm going to get that swept and get a kind of probably the same bag, whatever we're there. So, I'm not sure when that's going to be. So, are we going to just like disregard the state roads and not worry about that, even though they go down into the town roads and contaminate us again? She's talking about sweeping. Yep. I think they'll sweep the main street down in the corner. But that's the only one we really need to worry about because it's really about the streets. The only place we're driven. Okay. 
Yeah, but how far up Main Street? I would say the big Karras or um. No. Well, we did no, but we're not going out there to swing those packs. That's safe on the big curb out there. We're not going out. There's no curb in beyond Poker Street. Oh, no, Main Street, but yeah. in front of Stockdale and everything. That's safe. Well, right. Well, so that's the whole road is safe. That's my point. But, but you're sitting there. We're only going to be sweeping down that. My point, and I said because we're not sweeping Main Street, that stuff is all going to go down on Front Street. No, but I'm saying we're going to sweep Main Street from Foundry downtown. And we're how far does Main Street go? Main Street will go down. Oh, so it's yeah, the they're, fire they're, signal? It's going to get all that crap out. They're towing it in there. This, this system. Which turns into our system. I just don't understand why the state doesn't follow the same rules as we have to follow. Well, That's my point. To. If, well, if we have to do sweeping twice a, a year, the state should. They do. They, have, they do. They do. We just don't know to we what level it may be a different kind of permit. Do anything. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, we're doing our due diligence and we're getting it done, and then, but if the state road that connects to that road doesn't get done, then it's going to... Adversely affect us too. Yeah. And Stockdale too, by the way, has curves. Well, main curve, uh, that most of it doesn't go in. You know, it's not curving, regular curving like down here. We can get as much junk that needs to curve it. You'll sweep over if you want to. No, I'm just saying get the state to do it. It's their road. That's all well, I'm saying. Street, yeah. Why aren't we? Well, should we, we place a call with the state, Division 6 and say, you know, it's a really interesting point because we can't compel them and yet we're living with the repercussions. Right. I get that. Yeah. They have their own permit and it may be a different kind of permit with different requirements since it's not a municipality. So who's to say what they have to do? And if they don't have to sweep, they can choose not to sweep. I mean, and we, we may want to ask, speak. and then they say we don't have to because we're not required by law. And then, then, then we're done, and we're doing. But it's it. worth a conversation, I think, to coordinate with them and not sweep it if they're going to plan to sweep it three weeks from now or right. something. Right, that's all. I'm just saying, make a call for a division, division six, six, right? Yeah. Call the office and ask them if their intention is because storm water is requiring us to do twice a year. Are you going to do oh, twice sure. a year? Yeah. And and see what they say about are they like. What are their stormwater requirements yeah. for sweeping? Yeah, we got to go up there with a big bench. All these are the river and stuff there. Sound like that was so. Yeah. On a state road? Yeah. All side roads. Anything else I want. Look. Really. Which is why it did not get replaced on Portland Avenue to Cumberland Farms. It was taken out because. The state actually offered to install it for free, but the select board at the time didn't want to have to maintain it in the future, it. so they didn't allow for it to be installed. Perfect place where they should have it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Silver Street would have been real nice too. Correct. You know, but... A lot of people walk from that area down before. Mm -hmm. You can see where it was taken up. Wow. It's not a big deal of this. But again, they would vote it out, pick it out. It would be in the opinion. But that's beyond me. So, uh, I don't think I have anything else to go. Everything's going good, so. The bail has been, we had an issue with the bail, and they replaced it with silver. They repacked the cylinder.
would have to right. I mean, looking into doing we have the trade. We, we have we have a high line that we can mm -hmm. use if we you know, right? you know, don't want to be. not something we're going to use all the time. Yeah. It's just to, you know, to, you know, clean the trucks or whatever, help us out with different projects, manual labor or whatever. All right. Thanks, George. Good night. people for the Space Needs Committee so we can proceed with the Space Needs. This is the police station. Also the, police station. Um, the last two, uh, it, it's two people that are splitting the position. It's Michael Point, up uh, what? Three. Who? Michael Point, Lucy Putnam, and Julia Roberts. Oh, um, well, the other day we only mentioned Julia Roberts. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Um, it's uh, three people who would like to share um, a slot. Um, Michael Point, Julia Roberts, and Lucy Putnam. Um, they would not be there at the same time. It would just, um, because none of them commit to the full amount of the um, proposal that needs to be done. So we're looking to appoint them to share a, a, a position. Is that your motion? I'll make that motion that we appoint those two, uh, three people to share a position on the Space Needs Committee. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. So we need to notify them. We also, um, where do we stand on the police ground consultant? Did that get on the place on board? Um, they have the contract. They haven't received the check. They should receive the check. Um, they'll schedule things and start moving as soon as they do. So that should be in the data. So that's our hold up, the check. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. It's a positive. Yeah. Okay, so we're um, hiring a police consultant to come in and evaluate the uh, police department of the um, what we have and what we need. And I did it. Oh, you did? Okay, very good. So, um, we're going to go forward with that, and, and can you just advise us when they are going to stop the program? Yes. And I imagine that Chief Tushar should be going to oh, as well, because they will be going in the, yes. the station. So. Yes. And once they, we have that in front, because that kind of affects the Space Needs community as well, so we need to have that done as soon as we can, so we can get that information to be part of our, our um, program. All right, shared facilities. Do you have anything on that, do we? No, and I'm going to remove it because he's now busy with school starting, yep. and he said he would provide a report, but he hasn't, and so I think he'll do what he can when he can, but I don't anticipate, you know, I'll just report back when there's something to report back. I was going to say, yeah, there's just communication between you and him, and when you utilize it, you just go to it. Yeah, there's something that we should know about. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, also, well, let's, let's hear back from the police consultants for us and we'll discuss this building as I'm having a, what do you call it, a, not a piece of building, assessment of this building. Then we can talk about that later. Okay. Um, department heads uh, budget presentation schedule. You need to schedule each of the, um, okay, she doesn't have any emails, right? No. She hasn't, no. Okay, so the department heads of with their budgets for 2020. Mm -hmm. I will share with you a folder on Google Drive. You'll have your own um, Rollinsford email address that everybody else has. Um, and with that, you'll have documents that are automatically shared with you. But I will specifically share with you a bunch of things that um, so that you don't have to look for them, so that you can look for things in your, you know, when you want to learn more and read more, but that I can bring certain things to your attention without you having to find them. So okay. the budget folder will be one of those things. Okay, sure. Thanks. So we need to um, meet with each department head who submits a budget um, to go over their budget with them and then make our recommendations So what we will bring to the budget committee. Um, so do we want to do that on our off Mondays? Yeah. I, I think that makes the most sense. Instead of trying to squeeze it in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so if we have a 
we'll try to have a regular meeting, and then we'll have a budget workshop meeting the following week, and we'll just alternate them. Okay? Does that make sense to you? Okay. Um, so, um, do you want, I think we could probably do two a night. Sure, right? If not. If, if, if budget stuff is the only thing you're doing, mm -hmm. I think you can easily do two, two if not three. three. You know, yeah. maybe not all the bigger departments, but maybe, right. you know, putting a smaller one in there too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I spoke with Rock and I have theirs until next week. Um, but we, we have police, we have fire, we have highway. Yes. Yes. Have you have okay. library. Um, you have cemetery. Cemetery. Yeah. Um, you have town clerk. You have town. Oh, we have town clerk, and we need the town. So you need to let us know when that can be available. So I've started updating. Um, so I'm gonna give this to all of you. It's more up to date than what you're looking at. Um, it's more up to date. Okay. More up to date. Well, you know. <laughs> so, um, Thank you. Not, so like I said, but it's the department head budgets are all entered in there, and then um, other lines have been filled in as I've figured them out. So I'm working on a narrative that I will present separately, so that you're not looking all over the place for where the changes are. But then okay. I'll speak to them all in a narrative. Um, but there's still a lot of blanks. I just wanted to provide you a printed copy so that you can see um, what's, what's changed from, from before and have the newest version of reference. Things that are in yellow, um, if you look at the Excel spreadsheet, there are other tabs, and the other tabs have information that, when filled out, will automatically change cells in yellow. For example, when the board decides what the across the board increase mm -hmm. would be for employees, it will automatically change everybody's salary mm -hmm. or most salary lines in that way. And then that will change payroll taxes and things like that. So that's yellow. Lines, um, account names on the left that are in green mm -hmm. are, um, are lines that have um, income associated with that. I see IT and I'm not sure why IT, IT, IT is green. Yeah. But okay. I'll have to go back and look at that and okay. it may very well. But just so you have a reference for what the color coding means. And so advertising is too. Advertising is offset by um, like from planning and zoning, you know, depending on what the advertising is. Mm -hmm. People pay fees for that. Oh, okay. So, okay. so that's the point: is that it's okay. not, you know, it's offset, and it's not just hitting taxation. So, when do you think? Um, I apologize for the formatting, because you'll see that the notes. Or on a completely end. separate page at the yeah, end. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I'll send you the spreadsheet so you can reference it yeah. better. And the next version, I'll Thank do the formatting. Um, so, uh, one of the things that we have to discuss is, well, maybe not tonight, but the first budget workshop is what we are suggesting to be the, the salary increases across the board. Mm -hmm. Um, so those wouldn't be reflected in here. Right. They're only reflected in what they're asking for. Correct? So if yeah. they are asking for a specific yeah. uh, percentage increase, mm -hmm. then that's in the budget. And if it's at zero percent, it's because they have not requested something specific. Okay. All right. So um, And I'll, and I'll print you a better formatted, newer version with more information mm -hmm. okay. 
for next week. So next week, um, who do you think is ready to meet with us? They've all submitted yeah. their budgets. So any one of them should be ready. It's more about who's available on a Monday night and okay. whether or not anybody has any conflicts. So what I would suggest is maybe pick two nights that you want to do presentations and then I'll try to make not all the bigger departments on one night and we'll try to just come up with a good balance of you can either make it one of these two nights. Okay, well let's do next Monday and then what is it? Uh, the following one is Labor Day. Okay. And then the you're going to work maybe the following is, is, is the ninth. When you're and then, so then, and then the next. So, or we can go uh, not the Monday. On Labor Day, we could do something during the week. Yeah. Uh, not a Monday. We could do a So, how, how does this jive with the uh, budget committee's schedule? And when do they start their schedule? October. October. And when you look on your Google Calendar, you can see um, there are dates in black, mm -hmm. which are budget timelines. So you'll see when they're meeting over which department. Yep. On your, the committees that you're on, what is the most common day of the week? What is, so maybe it's Star Wars or Wednesday, and then everything else is not regular. It's not regular. So if we pick to Tuesday, then we wouldn't get, because budget is also Wednesdays. Yep. So if we pick to Tuesday, has Tuesdays for your... Tuesday's good, except so we can play every day at the family. And that's planning boards are going to be... And planning's on the 10th, they moved okay. to our meeting. Okay, so that's a Tuesday. Okay. So I think right, we did so the 26th, we'll <coughs> 26th, 16th, and 30th. You know, if we needed to do the 30th. Say that again? The, so the 26th is next Monday. Okay. Um, the 16th, September 16th, is a Monday. Okay. And then the 30th is a Monday. Okay. Well, you can also, if the board is willing and available, meet a second time next week. You could have a Monday night meeting for budget and then do something later that week. Um, Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday are all free next week. Yeah, okay. Just yeah. never know. Be better get some momentum. Mm -hmm. And then you'll know better where you stand about how um, you'll have received all the presentations mm -hmm. reasonably close together, mm -hmm. and then from there I think you'll have your heads in a better place with where you want to go from there. Okay. All right, so the week of the 26th, is that your plan? Next week. Next week. Okay, yeah. and so what is the Next other week. days? It could be any other day. Any other day. Um, we could to see if anyone is willing to show up. Well, yes. Well, let's let's do the 26th and the 28th and see what that, and I'll let you guys know what the 28th is. I'm pretty certain I'm all set. Um, so do you want to do 6.30 or do you want to do something else? Six works better for me, but that's fine. Six, 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 you know, um, well, it's also about whether or not the public might want to attend your workshop in that meeting. Well, we can't do it all. Well, I know, yeah, I'm just saying. Um, but we're trying, it, it was made a point that we try not to have around water with other meetings. So, Thursday night? Right. And Tuesday night? Thursday? So the 28th is a Wednesday? Yes. So, what is your preference on Tuesday or Thursday? Two nights in a row? Tuesday is my preference. So Tuesday, Thursday? Or no, Monday, 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 Monday Tuesday. Tuesday. Sure. Let's, let's okay, go. so 26 and 27. Just okay. all right. stay in the old way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. If you can get the people to come in. Yeah. Okay. Is it okay. You gave it a two-hour 
going in there, we probably could do at least two a night. Well, and then you'll know whether or not you need a third night. Yeah. 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 But even like cemetery is so pretty brief. Brief and um, the other one is great. Um, and library is not bad. No, because that's Transfer station and highway are probably going to be the heavier ones. Yeah. Lease doesn't have a whole lot of change. And fire's not a whole lot of change. Yeah. Although, you know, yeah. one change can cause a lot of conversations, so you never know. Yeah. All right. Um, let's, let's do those two and see what we can do. Do you want me to ask them your preference, or do you want to go ahead and do it? It's up to you. I'm happy to do it. Okay. But, all, right. Okay. all right, so we'll go with those two dates for now. And we'll leave 16th of September available. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Did you say September 26th? Is that what you said? I said 16th. 16th. So September 16th. That's the next Monday as a workshop. Okay. We definitely will have rec by then, so rec would be one of them. And is that also at six? Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. Land use consultant. So I talked to Denise and Miles briefly about this, and um, I have put in the budget a change in how we handle police, uh, sorry, planning consulting. And currently we have a planning consultant. I'm proposing that we change things to do them differently. Um, so it's, it's one of our non-publics at the end of the meeting. I just want to bring to your attention that I've budgeted for things in a new way. And so there have been changes to a couple of lines. Um, I think it will be in better service to the town for planning and for zoning. So um, we can talk about it non-public, okay. but um, I would like for um, for that position to be shared by two people. Um, for um, with Tom Clark with his um, extensive planning experience on the Dover Planning Board. He, he holds the Dover City Manager's spot on their planning board and has for a number of years, um, in addition to code enforcement and building inspection and all that. Um, so for him to go attend the meetings and to meet with um, Michelle Mears, who is a resident who is a certified AICP planner, who works as a planner with the city of Rochester, um, who would do the technical reviews um, and then meet with Tom and discuss those reviews and Tom would go to meetings. And I think the combination of that experience would really benefit us. So. Um, we can talk about it more later, but it's, it's, okay. it's reflected in the numbers in those two lines. Okay. Um, any questions? No, okay. no, good, thank you. Microsoft Office. There is a purchase order in the folder there. Mm -hmm. um, it is for um, it is for user licenses. Um, it looks like the other purchase, yeah, yeah, in your okay. left hand. It includes seven licenses for the police department because he needs them as well. That's going to come out of... Um, oh no, this only has three. Okay, so we need to add his seven licenses. Is there not as, uh, another one in there? No, there's not another one in there. Okay. Then I, I, sorry, I forgot to add it. So if you would add seven more licenses at the standard license rate. Standard, not full. Standard. Seven, standard. Which I believe is um, 250 each. Right. So that's another 1,750 dollars for the police department's user licenses. 
which he can take out of his office expense line. Okay. Into that. So, um, I don't. I think it was fifteen hundred dollars on top of that. Is that right? Yep. So that's thirty-two fifty total. Three thousand two hundred fifty dollars for the total of the purchase order. And I'm missing something because. So there's, there's one. Oh, there's one. There's plus, a full version plus for four hundred and forty. Okay, there you go. I'm sorry. So it's three thousand six hundred ninety dollars. Three thousand six hundred and ninety dollars. Thank you for your help with that. Okay. I apologize. All right. All right. So there's seven standard licenses for the police. Three standard licenses for the town, town office, and then one full version, which includes the publisher, which is you. Yes. So the three is Chuck and the two, two front office. ladies in the front office. Okay. And then, okay. So what about George if he gets a computer? Um, it's not going to change the pricing. It's going to be another two fifty for him if he needs it. If the board approves that. Okay. And who else is? Would be part of this. Well, and so it may also be that you know, I don't I don't know what what Ed's situation is either, and whether or not they can share that license because mm -hmm. Ed has his own tablet keyboard mm -hmm. arrangement mm -hmm. there too. So um, I'll go there and I'll visit and I'll and I'll see how they okay. use the computer and, and um, what they use and what they think they need. And who's it going out? Who's the name on it? Oh, I apologize, Microsoft. It's going to be directed with Microsoft. Well, it's not going to go through Tom LaBelle. If you would put Microsoft via Tom LaBelle, um, because I'm not sure if that. Okay, well, Microsoft should be fine. Okay, you can add Tom LaBelle on there if we're going to get it through Tom. Okay. All right. So let's make a motion to turn the floor. Move purchase order 1669 uh, for $3,690 um, for 11 total um, Microsoft licenses uh, to Microsoft. Okay. Seconded? Okay. And it's open for discussion. So this is year for one total? No, that's no. Um, the annual license is $99 per user, and that's an alternative if you want to do that for Microsoft 365. These are individual one-time licenses for Microsoft 2019. So you purchase it once, and then you use it for as long as your computer and the program lasts. So seven you licenses for the police, there are seven computers down there? This is for the they laptops? Have I'm not clear about that. Because I don't if you know have a device, it's, it's per device, right? Yes. Like, so if two guys and two people are sharing a laptop, you don't need Correct. two licenses, right? I just have a hard time believing this. So, so it may be like, like probably the cruisers, the cruisers four for cruisers, and then like three in the mm -hmm. building, probably. They're using Microsoft in, in the cruiser. Mm -hmm. I well, know that they are, but I would not be surprised to learn that they are. Because then they could potentially write reports up on the side of the road. Office 365 doesn't cover five devices for a year for $100? It says per user. It's not per license? I had 365, but that's just for me, so I can't answer 365 that. 365 is 99 per user. I believe it says per user, because I looked at that. It says up to six users on PC or Mac. $99 a year, 365. Okay. Access, Excel, Outlook, Publisher, Word, PowerPoint. Okay, so if you want to amend the PO to say 365, Preferred, and I'll talk to Tom about that. And if if we can do that, I, I I'm fine with doing that. It but that depends on how long you want to use. If these, because at some point one becomes more expensive than the other. But right, it's yeah, all about how frequently you renew it. Because yeah. Yeah. you know, one time cost is a one time cost. So you get two and a half years out of. You know, it's two and a half times. Well, although you get more than one license for the five, nine dollars, yeah. so two hundred dollars for ten licenses, so ten computers, two licenses, ten machines. You can rent them. 
because it's a single uh, key, single right. access key. It says 18 and a half years. It's, it's, well, they'll it's it's probably what I'm Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, you want us to table it? And, and, or do you? I would really not want to table it. If you can put some kind of contingency on the purchase order, I'll go with 365 if you can get six licenses for $99. How does that affect Kate? Kate can't use her dog licenses, and, and Tom LaBelle's, like, you know. I know, but how does that, it, it, can she use 365, or does she need to have the regular one? Oh, I don't think, it, that doesn't matter at all. Okay. But it, okay. As long as there's office, there's office, and okay. it doesn't matter what it is, which, which it is. Um, just know that if I'm doing 365, then I'm budgeting for that next year. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I have 365 checking into before purchase. Yes. Okay. So this can, as long as you go under that, then we won't have to re on it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? No. No? Okay. So it's been, so we'll call the vote then. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Is there a different one for the full version for 365? Because you, you needed publisher? She just, said, she just read publisher. It says oh, you that did publisher is included, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And each department is going to get a hit in their own budget. It's not all going to come on the town side. Okay. Yes. Did we check with Barry? Did they do that? They just did 365 they on their own before we had this conversation, okay, like a few months ago. Okay. Let's see. Okay. RWSD concerns. Water sewer. Yep. So the board charged me, you know, residents came and expressed concerns with the board. And the board charged me with looking into what could the town's role be um, in this situation. I've spoken with a number of people about that. And there are a few suggestions. Um, I spoke with an attorney at the Secretary of State's office who himself used to work for the Attorney General's office. Um, regarding right to know violations, meeting outside of meetings, um, attending and, and, and having decisions made before they arrive at meetings and, and, and like that. Um, no one has the authority to enforce RSA 91A but the courts. His suggestion is um, as far as if the town wanted to do something about that, is to have um, town council send a letter to the district's attorney um, with the information sheet on the AG's website regarding the right to know law um, and, and ask that attorney to bring to the district commissioner's attention the law and how it seems as though things are going on that should not be going on. Um, in the hopes that that would change behavior and make sure that they know. Um, if that were to not change behavior and people felt as though that was still going on, then if the town wanted to bring them to court, then at least it could be said that you tried to mitigate the situation outside the courts and failed. So you can say that you tried. Um, the town does have a role in the situation in that our facilities are in the district. So the town is a rate payer. Um, but also because the town is a rate payer, that makes every resident that's not in the district a stakeholder, albeit not to the same level of the people in the district, but by way of being a resident of the town who's a ratepayer. Um, and so for that reason they feel as though if you felt as though you wanted to, you would have 
grounds in court over rights now. Um, with regard to the town taking over the water district, that would require a vote of the people of the water district and the people of the town. There are recent situations of that happening with districts dissolving and being taken over by the municipalities in which they exist. There's only one, I believe, that happened recently that was water and or sewer. Um, the others were fire mutual aid districts, which are a little bit different because you're not delivering a service daily in the same way as monitoring and working on maintaining water quality. So, you know, that, that's a little bit different, but the, the laws are the same anyway. Um, it would be a long, it would be, we would need to make sure that there's adequate transition time. And it would be important to budget for it which would mean that the board would have either have to know, you would either have to want to put it on the warrant to the voters, or else, in either case, have a, um, a public hearing and, and understand from the people what would they like for you to do. Because what we would not want to have happen is for a petition warrant article to happen for the town to take over the district, in both the town and the district, and then it's voted to be approved on a certain effective date, but we have not budgeted or prepared for that. So, um, lots of advice about having lots of public discover conversations about um, what's going on and how the board feels about it and engaging with the public so that you can act in correspondence with how the public might want you to act if you know however you feel comfortable with that um, these transitions um, it there is not a case of people voting for this to happen in the district and then the town voting not to but that's a potential in which case it's not clear what happens um, Technically, under one scenario, according to my conversation with the Department of Revenue, everybody in the district would just build a well and install a septic system. But we all know that that's highly impractical and um, exorbitantly expensive and probably not to the best service of the residents. Mm -hmm. So, to some extent, if the people of the district are going to vote to approve that, then it would behoove the board to respond appropriately on behalf of the town so that we're all ready and, and doing whatever it is that you want to do to move forward if that's the path you choose to take. There's a lot of um, discovery to do and a lot of homework to do if that's the course we're going to take. Um, but again, public conversation and um, gauging public support for which way the public wants you to go. The other thing, someone, someone asked me the question recently, um, although this is happening in the water sewer district, it's been in the paper about Rollinsford Water and the Water Sewer District. That will reflect upon the town and that may be perceived as a water problem within the town. And it may in fact be in terms of groundwater and who knows in what other way it may affect other residents in that regard. But also because of a public perception, there may be an impact on assessed values. So if property values are affected, um, it would be certainly within the role of the board to protect the image of the town and do some PR around that and explain the distinction between the district and the rest of the town. Um, but it is something to keep in mind that if assessed values go down 
overall or even just within the district, that that alone will affect the tax rate regardless of what happens with budget expenditures and revenues. I guess one of the one of the things that I know that is occurring is that they um, someone is just not picking up a certified or registered letter, whatever, which one of it is. So it will not pick up the the request for the right to know because you have to sign for it. So they're not doing that. So they're never going to get that information, and I don't know how you can proceed with that. So I think sending a letter from our legal counsel to theirs. It might be a start, but I, I think we also do, as a, as a town um, selectman, probably we just need to hear the public and let them speak and hear what their concerns are, too. I think a public hearing would definitely be the best for everyone because, I mean, I am not at all in favor of taking over the district by no means, right. but, I mean, who knows what's going to happen going forward what's going to happen and the whole town needs to know to hear the opinion of the whole town because some are paying for something that isn't even service that they're going to get because it's going to come from tax dollars town mm -hmm. there is that you know so, so it's hearing the public be held separate well well two different things so if your assessed values go down oh, sure. because of the public perception, mm -hmm. then you're going to pay a higher tax rate because of the public perception, even though you are not at all in the district. Right. Okay, I get you. But if the, wrong, if the town of Rollinsford takes over the district, then they're going to pay for that as well. And well, so be... if, if the town were to take over the district, then the district would maintain its own separate budget and okay. would be paid still by rates by people in the district. So okay. it would just eliminate commissioners, and you'd have a department head reporting to the select board. And but you'd still be able to keep it separate? The funds would be separate because you absolutely cannot have the expense of an operation on people who are oh, not benefiting from that. Oh, okay. So that's okay. part of the transition plan would be doing the homework about how do we change our operations so that we can accommodate that. The other thing that I've learned um, is about Chapter 32, the budget law. Mm -hmm. The budget committee, being an official budget committee, has a responsibility to oversee the budgets of the town, district, and school. And so if a budget is overspent for where it is, in a, in, you know, if it's over 25% spent for the quarter, then it is for the people of that entity to manage. But it is also the Budget Committee's responsibility to inquire about the plan for ending the year within the line. So, um, so the, you know, the other advice is because they're operating within a cut budget and they appear through quarter two to be overexpended for that time of year, mm -hmm. what is their plan with that? How do they plan to continue and finish the year coming within plan? And they need to be open with that. Mm -hmm. And if that continues throughout the year, at some point, the budget committee, through a vote of that board at the expense of the town, could vote to have then removed the commissioners for spending that appropriation. Only for that one position. Or all. That's not clear because the, the group of commissioners together is voting to manage their money. So I'm not sure that that's one position and not three. Can so you there, repeat what you just said? I'm sorry. You can only spend within the authority of your past budget. So you have your budget of whatever bottom line. You, you are charged with managing that money. You can move money around, mm -hmm. but you have to stay within that bottom line. Mm -hmm. If you're not, the budget committee can hold you accountable for that. There, there is case law of a 
police chief who was elected rather than an employee. An employee would be fired, but an elected police chief was continually told by the select board that you are overexpending your budget, and he continued to do so, and they took him to court and had him removed. Okay. So that's an individual. Mm -hmm. It's not very clear whether in this case it would be an individual or a whole board, but to my mind, you can't hold one person accountable for the actions of a whole board. To my mind, it would be the whole board, but I don't know that. It's something that if the budget committee were interested in doing, we would have to investigate further. Mm -hmm. It's also not clear whether or not the budget committee has that authority if the select board is not interested in footing the bill. I don't know the answer to that either. Um, okay. If you are, you know, I can do more research, but that's that's what I've discovered so far. Okay. I would just make sure you had a conversation with John to make sure that he understands what uh, his role as chair of the budget committee is and well, understands. And as the ex officio, I would encourage you to <coughs> relay that to the budget committee and you yes. know through those meetings as well and ask those questions. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you and I enjoy our conversation together, if we can work out something, just to make sure we're all on the same page and we know what we can and cannot do. Is there any questions about that okay. process? About you um, no, but I, I do think it starts with a public hearing. I Absolutely. We, we need to... Yeah. I agree. I think... Um, How soon do we want to try to get one together? Because you well, need to get we people need to know it for, for budget. budgeting purposes. Yeah. So how would that work? Would we put forward two budgets? One that includes the largest? That's not working. Okay. So you it's fraught with problems in that way because <coughs> you, you budget one way and something else happens. Mm -hmm. And then what if you get a default budget? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what, one step at a time. Let's just hear the concern. Let's have a, let's make arrangements for a public hearing to hear public comment um, about their concerns for the water, with the water um, sewer district, and what their expectation is from the board of selectmen. They asked for point. your help. It would be helpful to know to what end they, yeah. what, what their goal is with that. Right. Um, but that's the limitation at this point of how the town could be involved if you want to. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned the attorney sending a letter. Did you? Well, I just, they, clearly they know what's in the letter and they're not signing for it, so they're not receiving it. It has to do with the right to know. So well, we, we, can, we can speculate to that. You know, there, there is more, you know, th there's bigger evidence out there that they've, you know, they've admitted to in public of having tours of the facility without noticing that meeting and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to keep it to what we know and give it to the, the benefit of the doubt. But nonetheless, there have been declarations of decisions at meetings without any deliberation or vote of that. So. Mm -hmm. you know. They don't even have motions and votes on anything. I mean, it's, it's just not the right way to do that. And what do you think, guys? Um, yeah, I'm not sure a letter would do anything. Um, a letter, there's, so a letter may or may not do anything. It's right. more about it's, if the board has the intent to take them to court over right to know, mm -hmm. then it would be good to take that letter as a first step so that you are giving them the opportunity to learn and change so that perhaps you can avoid court, or at least court can be more expedient. Um, you mentioned one of the times that we spoke that you thought you might be able to request some pro bono work? Um, I can request all kinds of things. Yeah. I can't promise anything. 
Um, so I can, I can. What would be a cost of writing a letter? A couple hundred that? dollars. I mean, it, it's going to be, you know. And it's a letter from our council to their council. Yes, on behalf of this board. On, on behalf of this board. And what exactly is it that we're requesting? We are bringing to their attention that there are concerns from the public about right to know violations, some of which they've admitted to them to themselves in open meetings, and we want to make sure that they are aware of the law and the board's concern over them following through with the law. And so, you know, please read here about the law and make sure that you are taking appropriate actions with regard to meetings. I think that that's, I don't know that that would make a difference, but it does sound like the, the first step, so at least you can say that you've done it. Yeah, no, I, I kind of agree with that. I'm good with that. Okay. Do you want to make a motion that we put it on record that we're requesting a letter to be sent from our legal counsel to their legal counsel of our concerns of the how the commissioners are um, how the commissioners are um, handling their meetings, and let Steve just make it whatever he needs to. So okay. moved. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Okay. So all those in favor of uh, say aye. 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 Okay. Motion passed. Send a letter. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so. Oh, so just to circle back, do we want to set a oh, date for a public yes. hearing? Oh, okay. Or yeah, okay. wait until um, we don't have much time? Um, would we do it in the evening or would we do it in a, a Saturday? I think you. Do, what well, you? Saturday you'd get more people for sure, I think. But you could do it in the evening, I think. I, I, yeah, just not during the day, I would say. Not during the day, during the week. I mean, you're not going to get the working people. Um, what, is, what is the availability for you? Well, next week's kind of full now. Mm -hmm. um, you're, Jessica, you're out the, the whole first week of September? Um, I'm sorry, yes. So the following week of the 9th, um, you've got planning on Tuesday, but Wednesday, so far Wednesday and Thursday are free, though Thursday is a, a school board meeting. Could we do it on the, the 9th prior to our regular select board meeting, or do we feel like... You certainly could. I would suggest that you start at 6 rather than oh, yeah. 6.30. Um, what do we think it deserves? I don't know if you would even want to consider a different location, though, if we're going to yeah. have people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So pick, pick a date, and then I'll see about location. Okay. What date are you looking at? So that's the 9th. Um, September 9th? Yeah. So it might be a bad idea to try to do a select board meeting and a public hearing on the same yeah. night, depending on... Well, you know, it can be done, just like you moved to the done. library recently, and you've had it at the Legion before. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, tenth so that's the Monday after Labor Day. The Monday following, yeah. Week after, okay. yeah. All right. Um, all right, let's, that's an epic deal. Okay? That's fine, yeah. Okay, well, let's go with the night. Okay. Um, we'll start, we'll have a public hearing at 6 p.m. We'll say immediately following the select board meeting, and if it goes really long, we won't have the select board. We'll just yeah. go in and go out. Yeah. <laughs> and make another and you can reschedule. And reschedule. Yeah. yeah. All right? Yep. All right. And you tell me what your thoughts are for a location. Um, I will try the Legion. Okay. Um, and if I can't get the Legion, I'll try the school. And if not, then I will um, email you and try to set another date. Okay. All right. That sounds good. 
Alright. I'm going to table the policy review. Yeah, I'll second that. We're going to get there, I swear we are. We will. Um, standing items, um, board members, activities, and updates. Let's get going. Um, I don't have anything for the remainder of this week. Um, budget workshops next week. That's it for the right got canceled for tomorrow night. So Does it have any date yet? Uh, I don't think it gave me a new date. It got canceled though. I think it's a couple of weeks out with a proposal. So um, um, I appreciate why they did that so they can include the directors, but um, oh, it didn't tell me that in my email. Well, is that what they did it for? Th that is why. Is because okay. um, the directors both wanted vacation for the one week before school started. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Which makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah. And then I think after that, it was availability of everyone else. Everyone else. Yeah. So um, we just need to um, let me know if I don't get on that, if, if that's arranged. We, we need to work on the timeline for all the other stuff. We, so the recap is late now. Mm -hmm. We need to, you know, we need to stay on getting the program written. And all the money has been turned in? Um, the program's closed as far as that's concerned. I'm sure we'll still continue to get um, busing bills. Okay. And who knows what for a little while. Can you but, just give me an update when you have some update about... Um, where we stand financially, if it was above or yes. Okay. And did we get a refund from the climbing place? We never paid. We never paid. Oh, okay. Very good. Um, so, uh, did you pay the team for? Um, yes, um, for Hilltop Fund. Okay. Yes, yeah. she's been reimbursed. She's been reimbursed. So okay. that's in there. So if we can get. Um, kind of a feel of where we are. I'm sure Dee's going to want that too, to make sure. Yeah, it's not final yet, but yeah, we're good. closer. Good. Okay. Very good. All right, so I don't have anything else. I don't think the rest of the week. And you might be, I don't have it yet, but you have nothing. Nothing. nothing at this point. All right, town administrator update. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot going on in getting the budget ready and, and working on numbers, things like that. There is a plannings busy with um, a lot line adjustment on Goodman Road on the agenda for September and um, a revision. We'll see what kind of revision to the proposed um, subdivision off of Silver Street. Yep. Um, that may require another technical review committee. I'm not sure. It depends on what level of revisions they're submitting. So um, there's just a lot of activity going on in the office, lots of um, real estate inquiries about um, things to do with properties and, and like that. We had our stormwater public hearing. That was really good. Um, so we're able to cross that off for one of our major requirements for the permit. Um, so we're just marching forward. The rest of the week is, you know, catching up on budget stuff. Um, so we're good. All right. We're working on policy. Um, I am trying to get um, numbers for um, welfare so that you can, um, that's the, Aside from the delegation of duties and the welfare policy, that's the, the biggest revision, is the addition of the appendix about um, the allowable expenses, the level of you know, what we allow for rentals, for example, for one bedroom and two bedrooms and things like that. So, it's all good. All right. Review of correspondences. That would be that's that folder that here. Some of those things on the left um, may have been already addressed, and Denise will know if that's the case. Um, sometimes things just haven't been filed. Oh, this was just the governor's letter to us. We're also there. Um, extension of cable television franchise. 
which needs to be signed yeah. still if you want to. So what happened was he he was incorrect about the term and said that it was up in I think January. Mm -hmm. um, you actually have one in place through July or August. So. Um, it has expired more recently. The term is different, which is why he reissued that. You signed it once under a different term. And so it needs signature again for as a correction for a different term. So it's going from September 24th until midnight on September 23rd, 2020. Right. So it, just different okay. month to month. The year okay. that he, it, it was a different year. Okay. All right, so this, we've already signed it, but what you, was the day before that we... It was in July, I believe. Of this July year. Of, of this year until okay. 2020. Yes. Okay, and so, so now we're just signing it because it's September to September. So, right, the effective dates have just been shifted a few weeks. Okay, all right. So do you want to... Do we need to make a motion because we already signed it? Do we just sign it? We should probably just, just change it. We should probably make a motion to accept the change to be... For those effective dates. This September, can you do that? Sure. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we um, accept the extension of cable television franchise agreement between Town of Allensford and Comcast um, for, where are the dates? This paragraph, in sorry. September. I left my glasses in my car. Okay. Um, <laughs> from September 24th, 2019 to uh, September 23rd, right. 2020. Right. Okay. Any further discussion on this? This is the Comcast between the town. Mm -hmm. Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So we each have to sign it. Okay. Townsend, um, have we heard of the schools of the future? Um, I have not heard, and so I wonder if they skipped a meeting or they just didn't get back to me. I can. Can you call it you? Yeah, I can call it Yeah. All right. So this one's with. I'm sorry. What? Um, the Townsend Energy bulk. The bulk, right? Okay. Okay. We were yeah. waiting for yeah. the yeah. school. Okay. So this is been signed. So then, when you when we are done with it, do you put it on one side versus? These are items that need follow up. So. Um, you you marked yes. the sides, so um, you can you can follow that. that done list. to be processed, so that would be in, over there. These need follow up. Uh, well, this can be filed. It can be filed, so you can put it in the filed. done side. Yeah. This is done. This one needs we need to get back yeah. to. Yeah. So, that's so it needs be follow up. up. Um, and then junkyard license. Oh. That's just that's a, just information for yeah. when you want information. So and, do you um, want to put it in items to be followed up, or do you want yeah, to yeah, put leave it in the file uh, just so we can yeah. reference it later when the time comes. And, and by the way, yeah. that is still going on. Okay. So what else do we got there? He has made transfer stations. Oh, this is the Ken Boldix. Right. That's just a copy of the letter that he currently has. Okay. So we're just yes. I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. no. that's If you would just vote to deny his request, if that's what you're going to do, then at least it's decisive. And then, he, you know, the, la the letter is the last thing that stands, but at least you can say that you took action and considered it further. Sure. Um, so I'll move that we um, deny his request for an exemption to the transfer station policy. Okay. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 
Okay. So we're going to send him a notification, or is he, I'm sure he's going to call us. He'll call. I'm okay. sure he'll call. He'll call. He'll call. Okay. Okay, so this, um, this needs to be brought up um, that this disbursement is being requested for this purpose. To move to approve the disbursement. To approve the disbursement. To approve the disbursement to the Rawls for Public Library for $2,000 for collection development, programming, capital improvement, phone, and copy release. So this is money that they, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll second that. This is money that they have budgeted, but they typically have, they have their own account and we pay payroll and rent, but um, typically once or twice a year, they ask for some of their budget funds to transfer over to their account to pay for their expenses. So that's what this is. Okay. Any questions? No. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so who has to sign it? We don't all sign it, right? It's just one of you. Okay. Okay, we that. Um, does it need to be followed up for you? Is it done in the fold that we need to get? It's done. Okay. It's done. Thank you. Anything else? Down there? No? Okay, so you're down there. But, well, we have this one here. What is this? Um, do you raise in front of um, that's, a, that's a lot of reading to be doing with me. You can, you can, one of you or all of you can come in and look at it or take it home and read it. It's two copies of the same thing. And basically, it's the auditor's attestment that he did his audit according to his you know, objective policies and, and, you know, we all swear that we're, you know... Is this the bond thing that was on our desk? No. No, okay. So, I sign this, and he sign, and, and you all sign this. Okay. Um, just saying that, yes, he, he did the audit according to um, generally accepted accounting principles and so forth. Okay, so first of all, he, he uh, looks like it has to be the chairperson who does it, but it says Michael Rollo. And I would just cross that out and just... You don't want him to do a new one? I, it's up to you. I can have him do a new one, but, I, you know, you can also just cross it out. All right, since it only has to be the chairman that has to sign it, I will take a copy home and read it, and then I will come in and sign it. Okay? Okay. All right. Is that okay with you guys? Yep. Okay. I'll take this copy home. We'll leave That's it in the fine. folder, and then if I have any questions... Just get bring it back when you're ready. Ask me yep. questions. Okay. okay. Questions. Can we just put that in the file? I'll take this copy home. And that was all I had in there? Okay, so I have, I'm all stuck here because I lost my agenda. Um, I'm going to get the um, red folder too. Before okay. You, you can take public comment if you want to. Okay. Um, community input? I guess not. Okay. So we need to um, go into non public. Um, Referencing RSA 91A colon 311A for personnel. I move to into non public for a personnel issue. Okay. Second, so we're doing roll call. So, Jessica? Jessica, right? Did you say yes. Um, yes, yes. Oh, wait. Miles? Uh, yes. Oh, oh, we're not going to go in yet. All right, go ahead. Sorry, one more thing. This is the abatement of um, resident taxes for 2018. The tax year is over, so remaining unpaid resident taxes are abated. There, um, this is you know, it's a tax and audit function to take them off the books. Oh, okay. And we have to make a vote, and then we have to sign it. Yes. Okay. okay. And you've reviewed it. Yes. Okay. It's an annual thing. Okay. So, let's do things right. I'm going to rescind my motion to go in a non public. Okay. If you can. Second. Rescind yours. Rescind. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so, I'll make a motion to um, accept these uh, re residence tax abatements in the amount of $3,340 for the tax year of 2018. Okay. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Tell me if you're going to go Three, three, four, oh. Yeah. Okay, do you want to look at it before? 
I, this is what you were talking about the last meeting, right? Over yeah. Penny and then paying back. Um, no. Oh, no. No. So but it's you, similar okay. in that yeah. something's assessed and then it's partially refunded. Like that's kind of what an abatement is. But um, resident taxes were assessed for a total dollar amount, ten dollars times all the residents mm -hmm. known to be in Rollinsford, and then. It's a liability on the books that that amount needs to be raised by taxation, mm -hmm. in this case a resident tax, but because they weren't all paid, you can't just leave them as an unpaid liability. Mm -hmm. um, the process is called an abatement to um, close the year and wash the remaining balance of the books, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you are kind of forgiving that resident tax for each one of those individuals who hasn't paid, whether it be because they moved away or died or aged out or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. And we no longer charge those anymore. And we no longer so charge those So if this will be the last one that you will sign. Okay. All right. All right, so now we can... Um, then I'll make a motion to go yeah. into non-public session for the first one. Okay. Roll call? Yes? Yes. 